for more than 50 years, Ellis Island has been the gate of a new life for millions of immigrants through all over the world. Millions of people who left their countries to escape from hunger, wars, political and racist persecutions, and build the American dream. Nowadays, it's not easy to realize how brave they have been in moving to a far and mysterious land. In the old days, immigrants had not any access to, um, to uh, say, films and, and movies. And so they had all sorts of fanciful ideas about the United States and about the new world. You know, they were very excited, the, the concept of coming to the land where, where there were supposedly no social class distinctions, you know and that there was this vast territory that had gold and mines, and you could just move and live anywhere you wanted to. That was quite a new conception for a lot of people in the old world, where they were required to live in certain areas by tradition, and they uh, were blocked from rising socially because of their, their birth. For the first time during the registration procedures, most of them faced the officers in uniform that were trying to help them instead of persecute them. Uh, prior to 1920, to enter the United States, you didn't need any of that. You needed no passport, no visa, nothing. And all you needed to do was buy a steamship ticket, and your name was recorded on the ship's passenger list. And that was the document that was used at Ellis Island, the passenger list, which was given to the Im immigration inspectors by the steamship company uh, on the arrival of the ship with the passengers. So that record was saved here and that was written on by the inspectors as they interviewed each immigrant one by one. During the interview, the passengers had to respond to about 30 questions, like where they came from, who paid their tickets, how much money they carried, physical marks of identification, and even political views. All those records now had become an extensive digital archive, open to the general public. Its historical value is incalculable. It was a lot of work, and it was like touching the Holy Grail or the Shroud of Turin. You're handling documents that are of great uh, historic significance. You're touching history, something which happened a hundred years ago, uh, and you can connect with it, and you are transcribing them for history, putting them onto a, uh, onto a computer database, and there is a great feeling of history for doing something like that. Every day I use these records, these databases, so I have uh, developed lots of techniques of even finding people whose name I don't even know, just based on information someone's given me about nationality and entry year, and, and um, only through digital work can you do this. With the old way where you just went through microfilm readers and tried to find, it was really murderous. You could take weeks trying to find somebody. Uh, now it can take minutes or even seconds. Currently, we can calculate about 40% of Americans can trace their family to Ellis Island records, and it's just a span of 32 years, so that's big, about 100 million people overall. And when we did launch in 2001, people were setting their alarm clocks at 3, 4, 5 in the morning just to get on. We were the number one website for quite a while. We get about 2 million visitors here a day, so we have people that are in 100, 200 at a time, just coming in just to find their records. Located in the Ellis Island Museum, the American Family Immigration History Center allows visitors to explore the archive. This is the center where people come in from all over the world and certainly all over our own country here in America to find the roots of their ancestors, grandparents, great-grandparents that arrived somewhere between 1892 and 1924. as well to experience that. I mean, it's not often that you come here and say, hey, that's my grandmother or that's my grandfather. It's a lot of emotion. Um, I look at it and I see my children seeing it. Then I see their children seeing it and on and on. So it's continuous. And I think that's what it is. You know, I feel like I'm contributing to part of this. It's, it's a small piece of me is here. And I believe it'll, it's here forever. And that's the emotion. They're connecting with a long-lost ancestor, and you get to see what their answers were, 
what their hopes and dreams were, even what their fears were, uh, because they were being questioned by uh, immigration officials before they were allowed to enter the United States. Records were so well kept and so documented and tell them so much of who they are and who these people were. And just being there to look at their answers and everything, you can establish a bond, a link, with these ancestors from the past. You know, so that was a kind of a really nice feeling to share that with other people, that these are people. These are people up here. They were somebody's parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters. The archive holds the stories of millions of people whose lives were changed in this small piece of ground in the Bay of New York City. And I remember one story of a woman, a German-Jewish immigrant, and she and her family are very lucky. They just got out of Hitler's Germany just in time. They escaped the Holocaust. She passed through Ellis Island uh, March 1939 when she was five years old. And they were told that they were legally in excess of the German immigration quota for fiscal year 1939 and they were going to be deported back to Germany and she didn't want to go back to that bad place where the people in black and brown uniforms were mean to her, her brother and her parents. And one of the U.S. immigration officials uh, saw her crying and uh, walked over to her, spoke to her, then walked over to her parents and said, folks, come with me. I have a five-year-old daughter just like your daughter. I know what's going on in Europe and don't worry about the quota. I'll get you in under the wire. If it wasn't for her sitting on a bench in the Great Hall when she was five years old, crying about being deported back to Germany, they would not have been allowed to enter the United States. She and her family would have been deported back to Germany. Chances are the whole family would have perished uh, in the Holocaust. And I spoke to her husband and I told her, sir, if that happened, you would have a totally different wife today with a totally different family. Your history, your personal family history would have been altered. Visiting Ellis Island is an historical pilgrimage. It's walking the same footsteps of the immigrant ancestors of the 40% of the population of the United States. It's more emotional to see it here, to, to, to see the reality of it being here and that you've contributed to part of this immigration process in the United States. It's a proud feeling as an American. And that's why I feel, you know, I'm proud that my parents, my grandparents come over here from Europe and Poland. I'm proud what they did. I mean, they got on a steamship. They didn't know where the heck they were going. My grandmother came here with a toddler, baby, and didn't know. So, and that's courage and that's strength. And um, you don't see, you know, a lot of that today.